This former school football field in Owego is now a platform for a world record. And more importantly, it's a symbol for world peace. And Dom's Bowling Center tells me they plan to reopen by next weekend. I'm going to give a shot at this. I am not an avid bowler, but right now I am live in Rochester. Tyler Brown, 13 Wham News. Back to you. Jenny, Doug, it seems like most of the fire crews now are leaving the scene, but the house that is a little hard to see right now, but it is on this side of the street, has been reduced to nothing but debris. And the explosion that started it all is something that firefighters and neighbors tell me they have never seen before. Good evening. We are live right here at the Black Lives Matter rally here in downtown Rochester. You can see it's very, you can see people are very, very vocal. They're very, very passionate about what's going on today. If a car rear ends you, one way Dave Jenkins says you can tell whether or not it is truly an accident, look at your mirrors and pay attention to the emotions of the driver behind you. But for this story, I wanted to give one of these at-home test kits a try. I found this one at a local Walgreens. It came with a cotton swab, a test tube, and even an overnight shipping label so I can send my sample to a lab. And just an example of this error, if you put your information on the state website and click search, for me, it sent me to a location that sends me halfway across the county here, about a 12-minute drive. However, when I put my information into the Monroe County site, it's a lot more accurate, just a walk right down the street. You guys have to leave your home this morning. Make sure you give yourself plenty of time to brush the snow off of your car, and you may even have to scrape some ice off of your windshield. That strategy includes offering more money up front, whether that's through higher wages or even a sign-on bonus once you are hired. City officials tell me that another way they want to improve walking safety here on Main Street is to create mid-block crossings. City engineers tell me one of these crossings will be at an intersection near Binghamton High School. Rap, rap, rap. At the Monroe County Sheriff's Defense Tactics Lab, deputies are training on a new non-lethal tool meant to stop anyone in their tracks. There's lots of times where, you know, you tell someone to put their arms behind their back or their hands behind their back and they don't listen. So those, those times would be perfect ones. So instead of having to go hands-on, you could do the bowler wrap. Here's how it works. Each bowler wrap is equipped with an eight foot line with hooks that will stick to clothing. Deputies can then use a laser pointer to aim at the upper body or legs. Deputies tell me this would be the least dangerous weapon they would use to restrain somebody. I'm gonna have deputies right now try it on me. Wrap, wrap, wrap. As you can see, my arms are tied pretty securely to my sides here. Deputies would be able to immediately grab onto me and put my hands behind my back. Scissors are used to remove the wire. 21 agencies across the state are already using the bola wrap. 100 others are considering it. Buffalo police recently used it to detain a woman during a mental health call. The device has also drawn criticism from several civil rights advocates. In a statement sent to 13 Wham, local Black Lives Matter group Free the People Rock says the Bola rap will, quote, dehumanize people experiencing a mental health crisis. But deputies say their goal is to have more options to detain people as safely as possible. So anytime we have to use force at the lowest level possible is what we want to go for. This is childhood stages. He was, he had to be like five right here. Monice Bratcher spent the day looking through the art hand-drawn by her little brother, 23-year-old Dave Jean Bratcher, who was killed on Thanksgiving night. And ever since he drew this picture, this is my favorite picture, because, like, oh, my God, how did, you, how did you draw yourself so perfect? <laughs> like, what the heck? His mother, Nakia, says Dave Jean was a college student studying architecture. He had dreams of drawing my house that he wanted me to move in. He wanted to put me in. Because I always told him, no matter what, we're going to make it out of here some type of way. But my baby didn't get that chance. Dave Jean was heading home with family members after Thanksgiving dinner Thursday night. His mother was in the back seat, along with his four-year-old sister. When they turned onto their home street, a suspect's vehicle blocked them on the road. I yelled, pull off. They got guns. As we pulled off, they went to shooting. My cousin got hit, my baby boy got hit. Now my baby gone. 
The cousin that drove the Bratcher family's vehicle has since been released from the hospital with gunshot wounds. But Dave Jean died that night. So far, no arrests have been made, and police say the crime was a random act. The family says as they wait for justice, they refuse to let Dave Jean's memory go away. He wasn't a street boy. He didn't be on blocks and corners. He sports. He drew. He read books to his baby sister. There's going to be justice. He deserves justice. Stop the violence! Stop the killing! The chance for change began at the location of one of the darkest days in the city's history, the Boys and Girls Club on Genesee Street, where three teens were shot and killed back in 2015. Stop the violence, stop the killing, stop the violence, stop the killing. Wayman Daniels lives in Gates, but traveled to the city's west side where he grew up just to be a part of the call for change. And we should be able to drive anywhere in this community in Monroe County where you feel safe. You got a 10-year-old daughter who is crying saying she wants to go home because she's scared. That has to change. One of the march's leaders was Charnette Grayson, whose sister, Latasha Shaw, was brutally murdered in 2007. Grayson says the recent murder of a Rochester mom in front of her own kids on Garden Street brought back painful memories. And that bothered me, because that's my sister kids seeing her get killed in the street. So I can understand the pain, and it's, it's enough. Community members chanted throughout the streets, leading to Dr. Samuel McCree Way, where two people were shot on Monday near a school. Officers say 21-year-old Madison Baroom died from her injuries the next day. When marches arrived, neighbors on the streets joined in and voiced their fear and frustration. Madison sat there in that chair, minding her business on her phone. Them ignorant bastards, because that's what they is, ignorant bastards, rolled by, stopped there, and shot her. It's babies outside playing. Y'all, it's hard out here. It's a struggle. As the march continued, more people came from the streets and joined the movement. Grayson says it's a sign of unity and the call for solutions to a growing problem. The more come, the better, the stronger. And it lets them know the community is actually uniting and standing together. A close call for a Norwich student. This shocking video shows the scary moments when a car speeds past a school bus door, nearly hitting 13-year-old Matthew Squires as he tries to leave. The last thing I remember was getting yanked back and a car flying by. Samantha Call was the bus driver behind the wheel, whose quick thinking and reflexes saved Squires' life. Here comes a silver car up the side. Matt's probably the third step down now. And all I could think of is Matt's going to get hurt. So I just pull him. Squire's mother says when she first saw the footage, she couldn't believe her eyes. I cried. I honestly cried. If she hadn't have been so vigilant and watching behind her bus, because nobody really thinks of somebody coming on the door side of the bus. Right over my shoulder is the camera that caught that shocking incident, and the bus driver tells me that this bus in particular has six cameras on it, which is the most out of any bus in the district. When I first seen it, and I actually had a chance to sit down and look, all I could think of is what, ha what would happen if I didn't get him. Call says the district felt it was important to share the video and spread awareness of school bus safety. It's got to get out there. It's got to stop. People have to pay attention to this. It's a big yellow school bus. Its lights are on. Its doors are opening. The stop sign's out. I mean, you're supposed to stop for the bus. Squire's mom says she is grateful for Call's action that saved her son. I'm just really grateful that she has quick reflexes and was able to grab him in time. I'm so glad that I was able to send him home to his mom because I don't know if I could have gotten back on that bus had I not been able to. I don't think I would ever touch the school bus again. I wouldn't want anyone else family to go through this. Like, this is horrible. Junera Prude says she spoke to her father the day before he left Chicago to visit his brother in Rochester. She never thought it would be their last conversation. He was just saying like he loved us and he wanted to visit his brother and see how it was out there. 
Prude says it's still too difficult for her to watch the body cam video of her father being restrained. Like something took my heart and just grabbed it and just snatched it out of my chest. Like it was heartbreaking. I cried for days after watching the little part of the video that I did. The seven officers who responded to the scene are on paid administrative leave, but will not face criminal charges. The interim police chief says an internal investigation will be finished by April. And if departmental charges are filed, the officers would then each be entitled to their own hearing, which could take months. Junera says the wait has been frustrating. And it's just heartbreaking. Like, we still have to live with that. Like, these people still have their job. Like, it's horrible. It's still like a nightmare. Daniel Prude's death has prompted some changes, and RPD leadership say more is coming. I think, given my experience, that we're on the right track, and, uh, and we just need time to implement the changes we have. Junera says she's hoping for policies that will spare other families the pain she still feels. And no one per family should ever have to go through this ever again. One man I spoke to is a father of six who has been searching for a job for seven months now. The other, a mother of three, who says a stimulus bill will go a long way in helping her feed her kids. I'm going to give you this to crack it into. Sarah Brown has always been a hard worker, from raising three kids to working three jobs at once just to take care of them. I've always worked. I don't not work. But the pandemic turned her life upside down when in one week she was let go from all three of her jobs. She filed for unemployment and has been desperately waiting for a new stimulus bill. We're scared. It's scary living day to day. Not even day to day. It's, it's literally hour to hour. I refresh my news like every hour to see what the latest news is, to see what my future holds, to see what my children's near future can hold. Brown says she was disappointed and hurt after seeing the president's tweet that negotiations for a new stimulus bill is on hold until after the election. I read it and I was like, what? And I like, it was like my heart fell to my stomach and I couldn't. When you have kids to take care of, it's scary. And she isn't alone. Anthony Simmons lost his business in March due to COVID and has been searching for a job ever since. He says the $1,200 stimulus check in negotiations could go a long way to help pay his bills. I look every day at the bills. I look, you know, to see what we got coming in, uh, what we got, got to, that, that has to go out, I'm trying to, you know, balance the budget, so to speak. And it's, it's always tough. Simmons says he is frustrated with the infighting in Washington. They need to remove politics and out of the equation and get back to the American people. Sign it off. Let's go. I need the help. My kids need to eat. Other people's kids need to eat. Another worry for these families is the coming of the winter months when they'll be facing higher heating bills in addition to the cost of putting food on the table. Live in Rochester, Tyler Brown, 13 Wham News at 10 on Fox Rochester. One week ago, Sarah Brown told 13 Wham Christmas for her and her children was going to be impossible this year. She lost her jobs, was in nursing school full time, and was falling behind on her bills without financial relief. We didn't even have a tree put up. I just, I didn't have hope for any of that. After her story aired, many of you reached out, helping Phil Brown's home with gifts. Just the most thoughtful gifts, like uh, complete strangers, complete strangers that don't know me. And today, another surprise. God bless and enjoy gifts and special food for Christmas for your beautiful family. Praying for all your needs and nursing education. Wow. That's incredible. <laughs> Inside the card sent by an anonymous viewer, $1,000 in cash. I can pay my bills. I'll be able to pay some rent. Um, so thank you. Thank everybody that helped me out with Christmas. I appreciate every bit of it, and this is unbelievable. Jay, that's $1,000. That's $1,000.
But Sarah says the greatest gift of all is that no matter how dark it gets, hope springs eternal. It's pure joy that I haven't felt in a really long time. It made me think, you know, one day I'm gonna look back at this and think, you know, I've been there. <laughs> Let me do the same for you. And I wanna be able to do that for somebody else. All smiles Friday, walking in her white uniform with other nursing school graduates. But the journey to get here came with many days of tears and uncertainty. It pushed really hard and we bent really, really close, but we didn't break. When we first met Sarah in October, federal unemployment benefits that helped her family get by had stalled. While she attended classes full time, she was struggling to have enough money to feed her kids and pay her bills. It's scary living day to day, not even day to day. It's, it's literally hour to hour. Months passed and in December with a new federal stimulus plan still uncertain, Sarah had no money to buy Christmas gifts for her kids. Her faith was shaken. I feel like I'm literally watching my entire life just fall apart. That was until viewers saw her story on 13 Wham. Strangers reached out to Sarah with money for bills, presents, and food. On Christmas Eve, she received this generous donation from an anonymous viewer. This is unbelievable. Sarah, that's $1,000. That's $1,000. Sarah says that was the day that motivated her the most. But the fact that total strangers could help out people that they don't even know, just knowing that helped me want to be a nurse even more. Six months later, her dream of graduating nursing school finally came true. After a year and a half of hardships, Sarah says her life has turned around and her family couldn't be more proud. I live with her. I see her struggle. I see her cry. I see her stress. I see all of the pain. So I really feel for her. And I'm just really extremely proud of my mom. If I can do it, anyone can do it.